folks, and welcome to another episode of NL Now, right here on Rogers TV. I'd like to first say some thank yous to some folks who have been great friends of the show and have helped us out. First off, we have Cohen's Home Furnishings here in St. John's on K Mountain Road, who have again let us use the two beautiful red chairs we do for our interviews here on set. Also, a great big thank you to Bobby Pike Art for letting us use two of her prints here on set. We have the Sin John's Town over on the musical guest set, and of course, behind me is the Jelly Bean Jumble. And the um, Fogtown Barber Shop on Water Street here in St. John's for letting us use their storefront in our opening shot. And Stephen Barkley from Diablo Puppets in Montreal for letting us use some of his friends on the show. Now, before we get things started, we have a contest. We have a copy of a book from Riverdale Avenue Books by Mark Shapiro called What is Hip? It's a book about the life and times of Canadian rockers, the tragically hip. We also have a copy of Erlen Coffin CD, Wood, Wire, Blood, and Bone. And all you have to do to enter is shout us an email with your name and address, and then we'll draw from all the names, and um, we'll, get you, we'll get and send out that prize pack to you. So um, let's get this show started off and running with Larry Foley. Two, three, four. Come get your duds in order, for we're bound to cross the water. Heave away, we jolly heave away. Oh, come get your duds in order, for we're bound to cross the water. Heave away, we jolly boys, we're all bound away. Sometimes we're bound. Liverpool, more times we're bound for Spain. Heave away, we jolly heave away. But now we're bound for St. John's Town to dance around with Gary and Maurice. Heave away, the jolly boys, we're all bound away. I wrote me love a letter, I was on the Jenny Lynn. Heave away, we jolly heave away. Well, I wrote me love a letter and I signed it with the ring. Heave away, we jolly boys, we're all bound Break it down, Maurice. So farewell, Nancy, darling, for it's now I'm going to leave you. Heave away, we jolly heave away. Oh, come get your dogs in order, for we're bound across the water. Heave away, we jolly boys, we're all bound away. Sometimes we're bound for Liverpool, more times we're bound for Spain. Heave away, we jolly heave away. But now I'm bound for St. John's Town to watch the boys. writer, actor, playwright, and producer. She has created several one-woman shows, which she performs and tours, as well as several two-handers with former NL Now guest Bernie Stapleton, including A Tidy Package, In Stitches, and many more. Please welcome to the NL Now interview chair, Amy House. Hello, Amy. <laughs> Hi, Gary. Thank Hi. you for that nice introduction. Well, you're welcome. You Thanks for coming. You did a lot coming. of research. Yes, I did. <laughs> Thanks for coming in the chat with us today. Oh, I love being here. It's a fantastic studio. Mm -hmm. So um, we have had a lot of people on the show, like Rick Mercer, Mark Critch, and Bernie Stapleton, and um, they all have said they got their start in theater by getting together with friends and doing some sketch comedy at the LSPU Hall. So did you follow that track sort of also? Well, I didn't grow up in St. John, so that... The Ellis P. Hall wasn't in my early mm -hmm. theater days. I actually started at the Stephenville Theater Festival 
uh, with Maxima Zumdar, which is where I met Bernie Stapleton mm -hmm. and Jeff Pitcher and all that crowd. Um, so that's where I started, and then I got invited into St. John's to do review and to do some stand-up comedy and that kind of thing. So that that's when I moved in here and invaded Bernie Stapleton's one-bedroom apartment and told her she was my best friend. <laughs> what do you think is the main difference in our theater scene here in Newfoundland and Labrador than the rest of Canada? That's an interesting question. I think that because we've been so isolated in our history, you know, there's no such thing as isolation anymore now with the web and all, you know, we have so much communication with everyone all over the world. But back in the day when I was growing up, uh, we were pretty isolated and you know I remember as a young girl the styles that were happening in Canada I didn't get to Newfoundland till two years later mm -hmm. so uh, so it was a different scene uh, so I think we were so connected to each other here in this province that we we were we grew up as storytellers the stories were in our families uh, every that's what people did they sat around and they played cards and they told stories so it's it's in our DNA I think so with regards to music and theater in schools do you think it's important for kids to get involved in those activities and do you think it helps them overcome things they may may deal with while in school totally mm -hmm. and I don't I think not only school students but everyone in the world uh, benefits from the arts and from theater and from music. I mean, it's a, it, it helps us to be social and it helps us to understand ourselves. So uh, it, it is a, a remedy for any kind of illness, I think, uh, the arts is for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, do you think there is enough support from our government here in the province when it comes to the arts scene? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't, uh, I never think we have enough. I think if, if we had more funding, artists could, mm -hmm. could do more with their, yes. with their creative juices. They, you know, I mean, we're always uh, held back by uh, what we have to do. A lot of artists have to go get jobs as well, so we can't spend all our time being artists. We have to, a lot of artists end up, as administrators in arts organizations, as a matter of fact. So, so no, I think if we had better funding for the arts in this province, uh, uh, we would have a more vibrant arts uh, community, and, and that would be a lot, because we already, our, our artists give a lot to the community, and, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we, can give, we could give more, and we could have more working artists, as opposed mm -hmm. to artists working at other things. So um, if someone asked you to write a four-person play or sketch and you could, you could pick two men and two women from our province to star in it, who do you think you would choose? Wow, that's a big question. Um, Bernie Stapleton. Yes. And me. <laughs> no, if I, okay, so Bernie and uh, Mary Walsh. Mm -hmm and uh, Rick Mercer and Bob Joy. Well, that would sound like a great play. I'd love to go see that. Yeah, I would too. Mm -hmm. I'd love to write it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I interview our local musicians and actors, I always ask about support from peers. How important is it to you to have that local support from other musicians and actors in our province? Uh, well, it's very important because they are my community. So that understanding like some of the best conversations I have are with artists because I can be as intimate as I want to be because they understand where I'm coming from and uh, where where I'm going I guess and and where my thoughts are coming from uh, Bernie and I spend a lot of time in one and two and three hour conversations because we understand each other so well so um, and and you know round tables with other artists are always inspiring them talking to me and me talking to them. Now I know you yourself have toured across our province many times on your own and other times with 
other local actors. Mm -hmm. What's it like to move from city to city and night after night get great local support from all communities across the island? Well, I toured the, the every nook and cranny of the province uh, many years ago when I was doing theater in the schools, and it was one you know, some of the best times I've had in my life because I got to travel, I got to do two and three and sometimes four shows a day. Uh, I got to meet a lot of people right across the province and to meet students who, who you know, taught us as much as we were teaching them as to what was going on and how the province was economically and socially. So, um, Touring the province is one thing, doing shows across the country is another thing. It's always wonderful to go do shows in other cities. Uh, Bernie and I took a tidy package to New York City one time, um, and that was an amazing experience as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, getting out and performing in, in other cities, other towns is always great and inspiring and feeds the soul. Now, um, before we play a game I like to play with all our guests called Get to Know Me, I'd like to mention that when we had Miss Bernie Stapleton on our show and during our Get to Know Me segment with her, she had an interesting answer to one of our questions. Why don't we take a look? Favorite Newfoundland actor? <gasps> Amy House. That was amazing. <laughs> She's so sweet. So um, how did the friendship of Amy House and Bernie Stapleton start? Where did you guys meet and how did you decide to get together and write and perform? Yeah, well, we met at the Stephenville Theater Festival and we were there for several years and uh, she was just one of my idols. I just thought she was so beautiful and so very talented. And uh, so when I was invited to come into St. John's to, to do comedy, uh, I phoned Bernie and said, I'm coming to St. John's and I'm your best friend, so I have to stay with you. <laughs> so that's how uh, we ended up being really close. And then we ended up uh, writing shows together and doing our fish plant worker characters together. And uh, yeah, it's been an ongoing friendship. It's, uh, defines our lives. Well, defines my life. It's a big part of my life. So um, now it's your turn to play Get to Know Me. So um, let's review the rules. I'll ask you five questions and you reply with the first thing that pops into your head. Okie dokie. Okay. Your favorite food? Spaghetti. Favorite color? Green. Favorite song to sing out loud to when you're alone in the car? Insensitive. Your favorite place to hang out in in St. John's? Oh my goodness, uh, the hall. And your favorite Newfoundland actor? Bernie Stapleton. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, thanks for coming in today, Amy. Thank you for having me, Gary. It's been quite an honor to be mm. on your show. Now, before we go, we have to take the famous NL Now selfie. So could you grab oh, the selfie stick there? Sure. Okay, here we go. Okay, you can just All hold right. it up. Are you in there? Yep. Okie dokie, smile. Cheese. Perfect, perfect. Excellent. Well, um, thanks again, Amy, for coming in and chatting with us. You're very welcome. Anytime. <laughs> Amy House, folks. And don't forget to always get out and check out and support your local art scene. Don't go away, folks. We will be right back. Welcome back to the show, folks. Here again with me, I have Larry Foley. Thanks for coming in to chat and perform for us today, Larry. Thank you, sir. Pleasure to be here. So um, many of you may recognize Larry from another show broadcasted right here on Rogers TV called This Old Guitar. Now, um, Larry, can you tell us how that all started? Yep, I have a whole bunch of guitars. Like, I have a bunch of them. <laughs> and I was afraid my wife was going to say, you know, move them or you know we're gonna have to do something with those or you're gonna have to sell them so i decided i would invent a tv show so i uh 
I love, I love guitars and being around them as much as I love playing guitars. So I thought it would be fun to have some friends on who had neat and interesting guitars. And, you know, I thought about uh, this old house and this old, you know, a lot of programs about old cars and things that mm -hmm. people are interested in. I thought, there's no one really paying much attention to cool old guitars. And so a lot of my friends had cool old guitars and it just sort of, just sort of came together, you know. So that's how that happened. And it's been going now for four seasons. Mm. Well, um, how important are shows like that, do you think, for our community to be able to showcase all the talent? Oh, incredibly so. I think because the most important word there is local, right? Just like you. We're mm -hmm. from here. It's about us. You know, and everybody likes a good yarn and likes to find out a little bit about people and especially likes a few songs. So it's pretty simple. It's not rocket science, right? Mm -hmm. No. So um, when did you first pick up a guitar and how old were you? I would say I had a guitar in my hand since the time I could walk. Um, it was always my, if you look, my mother has a, a baby book and listed as a favorite, favorite toys are a uh, guitar and a cowboy hat. So I guess I was like most kids, I like guitars and cowboy hats. So uh, mm -hmm. I never really learned to play until I was in high school. I never had any lessons <laughs> and such. You know, I grew up in Placentia, it seems everybody plays something out there. So all my buddies played and just from hanging around with them, I just sort of picked it up casually and then when I, I went to university uh, at St. of X in uh, Antigonish, Nova Scotia, and it seemed like everybody in the next room down was playing guitar, and I just sort of, I just sort of fell into it, and you know, I always loved it, so I finally took it seriously. And next thing you know, I'm a singer and guitar player. Who knew? <laughs> so, um, how many guitars do you have? That's a good question. I, I, I would say modestly, I'm probably in like the 50 range. Which I think keeps me this side of this side of insanity, but just that side of you know <laughs> over the top. Yes, <laughs> I know guys who have more. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. We've had some guys on a show who have a lot of guitars. My excuse is that I use them, <laughs> right? And at least that's that's what I tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, have you ever tried to rebuild a guitar or? come up with your own like guitar? No, nope. no, nope. not going at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I know so many guys who are extremely talented at working on, and you know, and it, I still think of, you know, St. John's and Newfoundland Labradors, you know, not, not a real big place, and for the amount of people that are here that do such good work, I just leave that to the experts, you know? Yes. Uh, I name some names, like Chris Kersey, uh Dave Guy, uh, Larry Drover, I know I'm gonna miss somebody, but, um, and, uh, and Doc Guitars out there. So many of those guys do such mm -hmm. great work that, um, you know, I've never really had Mike Hanrahan's another guy, who, a friend mm -hmm. of mine who works on guitars. We've had Mike on the Mike's show. Mike's been on, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I leave it to them and, and I find, you know, I kinda, it's kind of like a pit crew with a race car, you know? <laughs> I, I know how I want my guitars to feel and sound and, and most of those guys, you know, I, that you work with um, know how to get it for you. Well, um, we, um, I was down on at the George Street Festival this past summer, and um, mm. I was at the Ron Hines tribute that you hosted. I saw you there. <laughs> I saw you waving. Mm -hmm. So um, can you give us a favorite or funny memory you have of Ron? Oh, my God, so many. Um, so many. I remember one night I was at, uh, we were at the Rose and Thistle, and I'm not a very tall man. I'm not uh, ashamed of that. <laughs> and I remember saying, someone was telling me I was in the way, and I was like, I'm in the way? There's like 300 people in this little tiny place, and I'm, I'm like, I said, I'm like the smallest guy in here. And just as I said that, Ron walked by, crouched down, like at about this height, and walked right past, never said a word, <laughs> and just like, just like as if he was a puppet. <clears throat> no offense. And it was pretty hysterical. So he had a great sense of humor. I always loved that about him. So um, do you carry a songbook or anything along those lines? So when you see stuff, you might want to write or? Maybe, you know, I find in terms of songwriting, you mean? Mm -hmm. I think if you have a good idea for a song, it's just like making coffee. You know, it, it just <laughs> percolates. You get, you, get the, you get the grounds in there, and, and it'll, co it'll come to pass. I, I, cell phones are great for that now. iPhones, because they got the little, uh, the little notepad mm -hmm. thing in there. Yes. So if I have a line or something that comes to me, like, a, like an idea, I'll, type, I'll just type it in there. Or if I have an idea for a melody, you just go into the little voice recorder. So, but years ago, I used to have like a little one. You put batteries in, like a little <laughs> note to self, and you know, like a total, uh, total dork. I'd keep that in my pocket. But I find, but if it's a good idea, it'll come back to you without any form of device or, or writing it down. That's what I think. 
Now, um, when you're home and you decide to kick back in your recliner and listen to some music, do you read for an LP or a CD or a digital source? Or? Awesome question. I love your questions. I'm still very much in the vinyl world. I, mm -hmm. have, I have a pretty massive uh, LP collection, and uh, in, in my little studio I have a record player, so I literally like put on a record. There's, not, there's nothing more relaxing to me than taking, you know, say like a Sim and I album or, or something I heard <laughs> growing up, uh, I don't know, especially a Ryan's Fancy album or Chris Hennessy, Sons of Aaron, that sort of thing, or putting on a Beatles album. Th that for me is pure relaxation. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you sit there with the vinyl in your hand, you walk over, you, you put your hand down to put the needle on the groove, and when that side is over, you got to turn it over. It's involved. You don't just sit there and wait for it to happen. You know, it's interactive, and that's that's what I love mm -hmm. about vinyl. And it's cool that it's come back around, in, you know, in a weird kind of yes, way. Yes, it's not like putting your iPod touch on shuffle. Right. Exactly. Anything. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't even have one of those. I don't even know. What, I don't know how to do I that. I don't have one either. <laughs> so um, now you and I are about the same age, right? So that makes perfect yes. sense. So um, now it's time to do something I like to do with all my guests. We're going to take a selfie, so I'll go grab the selfie stick. Cool. Hold on. I thought we were going to get the speed round. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Okay, let me get it in here. Oh, oh careful okay, now. Here careful now. Make sure you get my good side. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Elon, thanks again for coming in today, Larry. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really happy to be on your show. It's awesome. And um, don't forget, folks, to watch out for this old guitar right here on Rogers TV. And um, how about one more song from How about Larry? we do that? Sounds like okay, a good idea to it. me. Just before I left to go away But I guess you knew that's what I'd say by now Then again I'm never sure when it's the proper time of day But we never get together anyhow Hanging out with the chicks, it was really nice To watch the candle through a glass of wine Dreaming dreams together when the quiet nights were yours and mine Just a pair of fools wrapped up in soft light Dancing from the fire Till the morning light would whisper in the sky I keep thinking that you saw me in the park the other day When I had the time I go to where we met When I'm on the road I How it was really nice to watch the candle through a glass of wine Dreaming dreams together when the quiet nights were yours and mine Just a pair of fools wrapped up in soft light dancing from the fire Till the morning light would whisper in the sky Well there's a party for some friends we both know and I'm back in town do you think that you can get there for a while? Though we were never meant to happen, still it doesn't mean to say We can't share with the last and look back with a smile How it was really nice to watch the candle through a glass of wine Dreaming dreams together when the quiet nights were yours and mine a pair of fools wrapped up in soft light Dancing from the fire Till the morning light would whisper in the sky Till the morning light would whisper in the sky How'd you like that, Maurice? It was beautiful. You like? Yes. All right, fantastic. Nope. <laughs> Whatever you're All right. Yeah. I'm blaming it on Maurice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>